Hello and welcome. I am that British guy, and this is a list of the 10 mistakes that the WWE made during the Superstar Shakeup. Number one, calling it a Superstar Shakeup instead of a trade. Now, the problem with this name led to a lot of confusion. Was it a full draft? Will there be trades? Does it include NXT call ups? And we just didn't know what to expect. If you call it a trade, we all know what that is, the writers know what it is, and they can then structure the shows of Raw and SmackDown Live accordingly. It just felt like empty branding, panic decision making, and a lack of thought out long term planning. Number two, the strange way of announcing the new superstars. Now, clearly everything was decided very late, with reports stating that both Raw and SmackDown Live rosters were to appear at both shows in case of very last-minute changes during the actual show. Uh, because of this, we didn't get any trades or negotiations backstage at any point, despite the fact that we were told the previous week that Daniel Bryan would be on Raw to negotiate with Kurt Angle. Uh, this would have made things a lot clearer for the crowd and for those watching at home. And a couple of great segments between Angle and Brian would have been brilliant seeing them find it out to acquire certain talent or even to keep hold of the talent that they didn't want to release over to the other side. Seeing Brian's delight at managing to keep hold of AJ Styles or Angle at, at keeping Rollins. But instead, we just got guys sort of randomly appearing for no reason and the commentators went oh they must be on raw now they they're on smackdown live they've got swapped over number three elias sampson appearing on raw as brilliant as this was to have him just drifting onto raw we were told that the basis of the superstar shakeup was into brand trades but no one was traded to nxt so he randomly just turned up and there were debuts the week before on the Raw and SmackDown Live after WrestleMania. So he could have just turned up then, but he didn't. And it made even less sense when there were no NXT call-ups on SmackDown Live the day after. So Raw just got an extra superstar for no reason. It was just weird. Number four, Sin Cara on SmackDown Live. All the Cruiserweights are on Raw. Enough said. Now, granted, this would have been difficult, but with 205 Live on a Tuesday, it makes sense and is something everyone has been expecting since Survivor Series. Yes, Raw is a longer show and needs a bigger roster and more matches to fill the time, but they rarely give any significant time to the Cruiserweights on Raw anyway. They get a couple of five-minute matches or a random multi-man tag match, and it does nothing for the division or the superstars. Instead... By moving everything over to Tuesday, you could show 205 Live before SmackDown Live, and then any featured Cruiserweight matches or segments on SmackDown Live could refer back to 205 Live. If the audience gets engaged with that, they might then even start watching 205 Live on the network, because you're actually telling Cruiserweight stories. Number 6. Moving the New Day instead of Enzo and Cass. Now, Yes, The New Day needed a revamp, and moving them over to SmackDown Live will be very good for them. They can walk straight into the title picture because of their record-setting title reign, and as long as the Usos keep the titles until they appear on SmackDown Live, hopefully this will make them feel fresh again. But Enzo and Kath need that opportunity a lot more. They still haven't won a tag title, and they're just milling around on Raw. It seems more and more likely that the WWE are ready to break them up and push Cass to the moon because he's the big guy and then Enzo can just turn into jobber fodder. Plus, we don't get to see the longest WWE tag champions, the New Day, versus the longest NXT tag champions, the Revival, in a lengthy feud and their couple of matches were great. Number 7. Moving Mickie James to Raw after her and Alexa's blisses falling out just before WrestleMania, the stage was set for Mickie James to turn full face and then help put over the heel side of the roster. Now, initially, Carmella and Natalia would have been brilliant because since Carmella's feud with Nikki Bella, she's done nothing. And Natalia's heel turn 
was very uninspiring and she needs a push and a boost as well. And they could have really benefited by overcoming the six-time champion and potentially seeing them then worthy of challenging Naomi for her title in the coming months up to SummerSlam or even beyond that. And it could have even in the future made way for a Becky Lynch heel turn later in the year due to Mickey costing her the title against Alexa Bliss. And while Mickey can still do all this on Raw, it leaves the SmackDown Live women's division feeling quite thin. And hopefully we don't just see Charlotte versus Sasha program, but with Becky Lynch instead of Sasha all year long, because that's just going to be a rinse and repeat of what we saw last year. And as good as that was, it just got stale. And seeing it again is going to just be awful for both of them. They need something better than that. And Mickey following Alexa could cause problems there because they need to be kept away from each other, really. They've they've done all they can in the short term. So hopefully Alexa will stay over with Bailey and Sasha Banks and hopefully Mickey can then elevate Emma and Nia Jax instead, which seems like a much better option. Number eight, moving the Miz to Raw. Now, after his superb 12 months that he's just had, forgetting the John Cena WrestleMania loss, of course, um, it, it makes sense to move him over to the flagship show as that is a brilliant reward for all of his hard work. However, a better way of rewarding him would have been a run at the top of the company with the WWE title, facing off against Orton, Styles, Nakamura later in the year once he's sort of established himself and then towards even Royal Rumble Survivor Series time depending on when he comes back John Cena and this time actually winning keeping John away from his 17th world title but this is very unlikely to happen on Raw because you've got Strowman, Samoa Joe, Lesnar all at the top of the card they're just going to completely overshadow him. So he'll be stuck in mid-card feuds for the IC title all year long again, which is great, but it's what we've just seen for the last 12 months. He needs something new. Number nine, moving Ambrose to Raw without properly ending his feud with Corbin. Now, after defending the IC title at WrestleMania, why on earth did this feud progress the week after? Now, not only was the street fight better than their WrestleMania match two days before and was clearly the match that we should have actually got at WrestleMania, it just kept the feud going for a couple of days so that Corbin could then beat Ambrose, but the title wasn't on the line. And it makes Ambrose look really weak because he's now running away to Raw to get away from Corbin after losing, something that Corbin even mentioned on SmackDown Live afterwards. This could have so easily been avoided by either keeping Ambrose on SmackDown and letting the feud actually continue and get to some kind of sensible conclusion, or just keep them away from each other for that one day. Just two days after WrestleMania, they could have either not appeared, or they could have just faced off against different people, probably in a squash match, certainly for Corbin, because he needed a win after the WrestleMania loss, and that would have made him look a strong, viable competitor again. But instead, we we got that, and it was just a mess. And then Ambrose ran away, and nothing got resolved at all. It was just stupid. And number 10, moving Bray Wyatt to Raw whilst he was still mid-feud with Randy Orton. Now, what the hell was this? I'm haunting you, Randy. From another show that airs on a different night. I'm taking my WWE title back, Randy. Even though Raw already has a world champion, and there's no way that they would have two world champions on one show, because then the other show wouldn't have a champion on it. What the hell? So everyone went, oh, well, Randy Orton's obviously going to win the House of Horrors match then. And... The writers went, oh, it's a House of Horrors match. Bray Wyatt needs to win that, really. But he can't win the title. Um, 
oh, here's an idea, let's remove the title from the match stipulation. Therefore, Bray Wyatt can win. Mm, okay, but then Bray Wyatt doesn't get his rematch for the title he lost at WrestleMania. So, what? <laughs> he loses, he then gets his title rematch opportunity, but he doesn't get that because he's been moved on to Raw. See, this is a perfect example of last-minute panic decision because it was said that it was due to be AJ Styles moving over to Raw, and then at the last minute, they swapped out AJ Styles for Bray Wyatt, and because of that, you just got a complete mess of a program. He had to beat Orton without the title and kind of get moved into the universal title picture but he probably won't win that so he's just been forgotten about and my god doesn't the elimination chamber seem like a long long time ago now poor poor Bray Wyatt and that has been 10 mistakes the WWE made during the superstar shakeup I have been that British guy if you like the video please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel and I will see you soon goodbye